welcome to episode eight of the Good Old Boy Show, where you can sit back, relax, crack open a beer, and chill with the boys. I'm Reed Allen Worth, and I'm Earl, and we're here That's... back at the Tiny House Studios. We took a field trip to Pittsburgh last week. Downtown. Ate a bunch of Thai food, dude. Oh, yeah. it seems like yesterday that I was sipping my green curry with a smile. Oh, man. I even told you I, you could drink it. The curry. So good. Don't Always a winner, winner. Do they make pad thai with peanut butter? They do put peanuts in it and some peanut sauce they mix in the, the sauce that goes on top of it for sure. I honestly didn't know and I never looked it up. And I just remember someone saying, they're like, well, that's just like peanut butter and noodles. And I'm like, really? They're mm-hmm. like, yeah. No, but there is a peanut aspect to it. Okay. Now, I want to get this out of the way. You want to rate that really awesome beer we had last week? Yeah. <laughs> because I want to try this beer because I'm so excited about it. It looks so good. Yeah. Um, well, I'll do the honors. Go ahead, buddy. I think. Don't hold back. No, Don't hold back, no. girl. Don't hold back. I think like the alcohol percent in some of those, it's like point zero one. It's a nothing. So I'm I'm just gonna give it a one. That's just, just a one. Number one. Wow. That's less than what I was gonna give it. What were you gonna give it? I was gonna give it like a seven just in case. Cause you never know. There are like hundreds of beers that we're gonna wind up trying. You know, it could get Go really figure. bad. It's like once you think of something, like something you don't look for or see, it's kind of like uh, I think of it as vehicles or anything. Like I've never seen one of those. Then you see them. Then you see tons of them. Yeah. Every gas station I go to this week, I'm looking around. And a beers. Oh, everywhere. Of course. Could have went in and bought like nice little small six pack. Um, I think Natty. Natty has NA. Hmm. Um, I did find the cores. Obviously, O'Doul's. That was um, that was one of the first beers when I used to go to the cabin, like with my dad and his buddies. I can remember about, you know, I say fifth grade, probably fifth, sixth grade. They'd be like, "Yeah, you can have one of those." I mean, it tasted like straight up, but like to me, I figured out it's like skunked beer. But I'm like, "Wow, this is what alcohol tastes like." <laughs> I had no idea. And, like, a few nights, they'd be like, yeah, go ahead, take a few. I'd be like, oh. I mean, I was under the assumption that all beers tasted like Coors Light for a long time. I thought we were going to get a beer taste with that. I didn't get a single beer taste. Not not much one at all. When you chugged it towards the end, you got it was like light. Talk about bush. 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 Nothing against That's what the flavor was. It's like somebody whispered bush into your mouth. I mean, I got a 12-pack of bush light. Just picked it up last night, sitting in the fridge, waiting for me. That's that's who I am, but not that kind of bush. So what are we going to give her, man? Oh, man. Well, I guess now you're making me feel bad. I, I'm saying it's it's a just-in-case. One through 100 like I said, is a I'm, lot. I'm a roundup type of guy with numbers. We've been doing this pretty good with the rating. Um, I'll give it a five. Fair. Yeah, but. totally fair. Okay. All right. So let's get to it. Today? Oh. <laughs> Founders. Founders. Hey, could you? Panther Club. Before we leave Pittsburgh behind, just give me a good, that sounds like a good Pittsburgh word. Founders? Founders. Give it to me one word. Pow, pow. Founders Panther Club. <laughs> Yum. I think I'm going to make you introduce every single beer for the Pittsburgh <laughs> In a accent. user accent. Yes. All right. So this is a porter with vanilla extract and maple syrup aged in bourbon barrels. I'm really excited for this. It looks super delicious. It was bottled on 2-1. Really? Yeah, right here in the back. Bottled on 2-1-21. Well, how about that? And it was oh, bottled in... Fresh. And I believe this is their, I think they're calling it, I, and I'm not familiar with Founders Grand as Rapids, much. Michigan. This is the Barrel Age series. All right. Well, I'm ready to give this a go. Yeah. Cheers, cheers brother. Wow. If I could pour that in a glass, that is... Um, that's intense. That's crazy. That is a lot you know of what I, layers of flavor, man. Do you know what I taste the most, though? The maple syrup? Yeah. I'm not I, I about almost it said, either, I almost, I almost messed up and said honey. I taste the honey. I was going to go, I taste the honey the most. Wow. But, um, That's special. And it, it's a 9.2. Wow. 
Wow. So that's strong. And you can, I mean, it's sweet. It's really delicious and really smooth. That that hits you right, right in the taste buds. Smacks you right in the freaking mouth, man. Right in the kisser, pal. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Super cheers, delicious. Cheers to the founders. Yeah. Cheers to them. Where are they out of? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mm. Gonna have to try more of those, but it gets me the chills going and down there. I'm not gonna lie, it was 14 Barrel bucks. Age 14 bucks for a four pack, but it. it's worth it because yeah. 9.2. I mean, this is two beers when I'm well, drinking one beer. Being barrel age, that uh, that kicks it up a notch. I I had a uh, I had a few beers like that a while back. Got kind of introduced to that with the being aged in the whiskey barrels. You'd say and it's an ass kicker, man. Okay, bud. Let's get down to it. Oh, okay. Wow. wow that got when serious. when did you have your first beer? I got when a really, was... really crazy nose itch. Hold on. Get it, you... get it, get Wait. it. Wait. Do you have the waxer? No, I'm just joking. I'm serious. No. <laughs> Dude, I just noticed today that my nose hairs were growing in for the first time. That's how long we've been doing the podcast. We waxed our nose and mine's already grown in again. Yeah, I'm bound to. I could probably do it again. Yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> we might not need to do it on camera next time, but it's it's... I'm about due, I feel. Yeah. I'd probably give it another shot. So first beer. Oh, man. I feel bad, like, saying it, because you know what I mean? It was like, it was around, like, you know, some, it was with some, it was the older adults, you know, one of those deals with what happens at the cabin stays at the cabin. I don't think that's boys a bad thing. Boys are boys. I think it's, I truthfully feel like it's healthier for you to introduce it, to teach you know, uh, it moderation. It wasn't like a total drunk fest, though. No, but what I'm saying is, is I like, feel like it's it's you have a beer. It's better to teach in moderation yeah. than to allow someone to go haywire later in their life because they never got to try it. That's my personal opinion. I almost said it when we started this, so it wasn't even a beer. So the drive-through, um, the original Lisbon drive-through. Those that remember it, a guy named Sammy. He was the man. He's not around anymore. I don't. I don't who knows where he's at? Anyways, um. The mini kegs. They always had these like little mini kegs. Cool as hell looking. Heineken was like really popular with them at the time. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get a time frame and an age here for you. Is that kind of what you want? Yeah. Um, and, and just the story and the experience. Oh, man. I honestly want to say like fifth or sixth grade. Okay. But I, I'd had like a beer prior to that. But I'm thinking like fifth grade. I mean, Sounds about right. So, but this experience was definitely, I was, I want to say in sixth grade, mini keg came down, you know, we'd go to the cabin, like it was a, a weekend ordeal, like, you know, came home from school either Friday, you know, pack your shit, either I knew Thursday night, it was like, hey, we're going to the cabin this weekend, mm -hmm. have your stuff packed, we're going after school Friday, or it was, depending on the season, like if it was football season, you know, you're going Saturday. You know, you're going to the game Friday and probably going down Saturday morning. But if it was any other time, nothing was going on Friday night, we're going. So we'd leave my dad and his buddies, and uh, we'd be down there. Just good old time, man. I mean, we'd night ride. It'd be 2 in the morning, and it's like, you know, who wants to go for a ride? And it was like time to ride some four-wheelers. Yeah, and just go. But we we were safe about it. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty. I mean, we were doing our thing, but it was fun. It was a hell of an experience, man. Hell of an experience. None of my friends experienced this. I mean, I can't say anybody I really know has or did or, but it was wild. We had four wheeler rides, man. I'm talking guys that had four wheelers from Lisbon. They'd come down, just not from the cabin. I'm talking 12 to 20 lined up. Yeah. I mean, to have a video of it, it was amazing. You'd ride till two in the morning, but uh, they had the mini keg. Guy brought it down one weekend and I was fascinated by it. And they were like, finally that night, um, you know, dinner time, I was like filling the guy's cups up with it. You know, the guy got it out. I was like, man, that is so cool. And uh, he's like, here, here, fill mine up, you know. And um, finally they're like, here, you have a little bit. Nice. So like then it was like a little bit more. And then it was like, I'm going to take a little bit more. And I mean, it didn't take long. I I was young, you know, had small. What, what I figured out was a buzz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely threw up that night. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Got sick. Got sick. But uh, yeah, it was crazy, man. It was funny. 
Like they they razz me the next day, but we're kind of like, hey man, you're not gonna be no more of that. Like it was one of those deals. Like, <laughs> hey, you took a lot out of there last night. Uh, not a lot, but for my age, and they were like, yeah, no more of that. That's and I was funny, like, yeah, man. but what about you? First time, uh, well, first can, beer, but then first time getting drunk. I can't remember if we were sneaking beer first or liquor first, but I remember we were at my buddy's house. Okay. And his parents had a pretty extensive stock in the basement. Okay. So they had a fridge full There's of beer. There's always one parent that yeah. has the setup. They had a fridge full of beer, and then they had, like, a total stash full of liquor. And this was never my idea. I need to preface this. My conscience it's, it's never. was always, like, screaming at the top of its lungs, what the fuck do you think you're doing, kid? You know, but the friend that gets caught, it's always the friends that stayed the night's fault when they leave. Exactly. Yeah. So here's what would happen. My buddy would get a water bottle and he would take just a tiny little bit, like just a a, a half of a teaspoon of every single bottle until we had like a half or three quarters full of a water bottle. And then we would just take it back and forth. Of this just, like, concoction of multi-liquors. You guys not realizing, like, dude, we have the total kick-ass mixture right now. Like, even adults would be like, no, I don't want anything. It was like fucking paint thinner, man. Yeah, that's nasty. It was wild. That's nasty. So, between that and he would also, from time to time, steal a few... I want to say they were Michelob Ultras. Yeah. And listen to how he would get rid of the bottles. He would open his basement door, walk up the cellar stairs, and then throw them into the yard. Like in his front yard? In his backyard. But I was like, dude, (laughs) they're going to find them. Yeah. I mean, like, they're like four or five bottles, you know, like your parents are going to find them. And he's like, no, they're not. This is like one Definitely did. No, this was like throughout. You know, multiple times, like, you know, one time we might have, like, you know, snatched the liquor. One time we might have snatched the beers, but, like, we didn't go about it in the smartest way. But I would say that's that's probably either one of those times or probably the first time. What about your first? And that was your first time getting drunk, too? I would say one yeah. of those times. I drink well, that, that co- concoction you just said, man. I But getting really drunk, like actually drunk, like drunk, drunk, throwing up, like too drunk, shouldn't have done that. Yeah. A friend of mine bought me a bottle of that watered-down vodka that you can get at the, the Circle K. I used to picture like a small one when I worked at Sparkle. In high school, it was like a, it was like a red label, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it but was nasty. like you know, super watered down, gross vodka. Oh yeah. But I, being the dumb teenager that I was, drank the whole thing in one sitting, and then Ugh. the toilet was my best friend for the rest of the evening. It's like a bad Mad Dog twenty twenty night. Yeah, man. You've had to have had a bad. Have you ever had a bad Mad Dog? No, but I can only imagine that it's similar to For Loco. Oh man! In the experience that one would have, as far as malt liquor is concerned. Me and Casey laying in bed here last week, and my eye is playing games with me today. I even brought my, uh, I even brought my spectacles. If I have to make a change, I will. Just in case, man. Yeah. I mean, these studio lights are pretty bright. Yeah, it is. It's just I had a red eye today. It was bugging the crap out of me. I rubbed it. I got contacts. I hate that feeling, man. But those lights, they're bright. Super bright. Back in the tiny house studio. Back in the tiny house studios. This ain't the car. This ain't downtown Pittsburgh anymore. No, we're back in Elton, baby. This is the big times. Yeah, yeah. The spotlight. I'm in the I'm in the limelight. You are, man. It that looks would, good on you. Yeah, I'm here. I'm ready for my... <laughs> I'm ready for my... Uh, Your close-up? Yeah, what was the guys... What would they used to say? I'm ready for my close-up, Mr... Uh, wasn't there a guy's name you they'd say? Mr. De- DeVille? I don't know. Uh, we'll that's have to not look like a Hollywood thing. <laughs> Can't wait till we have the lookup person. We need one. Yeah. Not now though. No. Eventually. Yeah. Down the down the line. Yeah. All right. But I gotta I gotta ask you something. So Oh wait, wait. Was I talking about Mad Dog? Yeah. Yeah, you were. Go ahead, tell your story. No, it was just um Yeah, I I just wanna say that those bottles, they're unbreakable. 
And then, oh, no, I was talking about me and Casey were talking about Four Loco this week. Ah. Uh, yeah, and she said something, um, were they really that strong? I said, yeah. I still had them in Georgia. We still had the ones they hadn't changed over yet. I was going to say, did you have it before they took the crazy out? Yeah, we were watching a video together. That's what it was in bed before we went to sleep. And it was a kid talking about four, what Four Locos were. And um, so I get home from my rack, and a buddy of mine comes over. I have not had these four locos yet. And mind you, I've been sober for nine months. What's hey, up, Katie? Lena? What's up? She's so, like, mm, that smells yummy. So nine months sober. Um, and the first thing you drink is a four loco? First thing. Oh, bud. Yeah, man. Went hard in the yard. Um, he came over, and he <laughs> it was funny because he literally tells me, he goes, yeah, I guess if you drink two of these, you like black out. Oh, yeah. I said, you know that? Or is that... And he's just like, you know, smiling. And I'm thinking like, oh, okay. So not his first throw day out. Um, my dad found me on the kitchen table. <laughs> but like kind of <laughs> like one of those deals like, you all right? You know, like like just fell asleep, but crawling up on the table. Oh, my and, gosh, uh, bud. Yeah, I still had the one sitting there, but it was basically gone. That is hilarious, yeah, man. Yeah, that was my first night back, man. And uh, You couldn't even make it to the bedroom. I don't even just remember. Just like, right up on the kitchen table. I don't even remember passing. No. That like is I said, hilarious, he just woke dude. me up. He was going to work. You okay? I was like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, Where man. am I at? Like, you're back to Talk alive. about the Saturday scaries, <laughs> bud. Yeah. So that was my first four loco. But I know when I got back then, I went back, came back. And at that point, they were like, yo, man, they're taking this stuff out. I was at a gas station and. They had tons of them still. And then it yeah, started, they had to get rid of them. It started catching on, so people started buying them. Yeah. So I bought a bunch of the grape. I think they were grape. They were gross. They were really, they were they really were nasty. They were all gross, man. Yeah, I can't drink anything like that anymore. Oh, no. No it way. It tears me up, man. No way. But this, uh, I can drink this Founders. Anytime. Barrel Age 2021 release. It's, it's still shocked by seeing 2021. It's crazy. Fuck. What is time? Oh, no, it's flying. Yeah. I mean, we're having, I've, I've got kids, got number two on the way. I mean, it is flying. It's cooking, cooking. I mean, that baby's ready to pop out anytime. Yeah. Well, technically she's, sorry, freaking arms. It's a flannel. You locking up there, bud? You're just oh, itchy. Dude, can I, that, is that the chiropractor? It's just, I'm rough, man. My eye. I had to go to the chiropractor today. I told you're having you. a tough go, dude. I'm you're telling falling you, apart, I'm man. beat up. We might as well take you out back and shoot you. It's one of those deals. It's like, hey, man, cut the legs off the horse. <laughs> She's ready. We to ain't go. digging no more. Ready boys. to go to the glue factory. Yeah, man. Make dog food out of me. Whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever I could do to service. As long as we tan a dog your hide or when you die. kids at school, whether they're eating me or putting me on paper, I want to service something when I'm gone. But um, <laughs> yeah, no. Shout out to uh. Blue Ribbon Chiropractic, uh, Dr. Lisa, she got me fixed up. She's in Columbiana. I'd even tell her I was going to give her a shout out, but she wouldn't fucking care. So, um, she's awesome. She also takes care of, uh, animals. That's kind of her expertise. That's cool. Yeah. So she takes care of right there. Charlie. Charlie boy. Yeah. She comes over, takes care of Charlie too. She, uh, Casey and Blake got an appointment Monday. Blake goes to her too. That's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, all of her friends. Take um, a lot of them. They take their kids there, but um, I don't know. People have different opinions on chiropractors. Like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. You should do that. I've got some nerve issues, damage, and I don't know what I would do if I didn't have one. Like, I don't know what I'd do. I I seriously don't. So, just shout out to all chiropractors, especially the good ones, because I've had some shitty ones. I mean, some terrible. I mean, she takes her time, so shout out to Dr. Lisa. She's also going to be doing, uh, because we're we're all about beer. Um, um, sorry, Birdfish. Birdfish in uh, Columbiana. They're going to partner with her this, this spring. They're trying to get it going here rather soon. They've been in the works. Um, she's going to have a beer made. She's making her own beer. That's awesome. So they're going to collab. So she's having the beer made, and it's her. You know, she gets to pick everything out. And then while they're doing the, the beer release, she's going to, anybody can come with an animal and she'll adjust them. That's awesome. I think humans and pets that day. Probably both. That's pretty wild, man. Yeah, so, yeah, shout out to both of them, Birdfish and uh, 
Dr. Lisa, so. I've been meaning to try. We got to have. I, I, birdfish. Yeah. I've only heard good things. Yeah, no, birdfish is really good. They've, they got it right, man. So. So you brought up Charlie. Mm-hmm. And Luna came over and said, hey, earlier. Yep. I got to ask you something. When you get down and dirty. Oh, boy. Does Charlie leave you guys alone? Or does he like to be or try to be in the same room as you guys? Um, I think like both, but I think a lot of times he like, it's one of those like, you know, like he's not the way, but. Closer than you'd like him to be. Well, like, you know what I mean? He's, he maybe his presence is known or there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's not like got his nose up my ass. No. No, I'm just no, I'm joking, no, 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 but. but I mean, that is, it's, it's a real thing that has happened. I'm, I'm sure if I'm, not you, it, I'm sure a lot of people it have has had happened some scares to me. where they've been doing the deed and a wet nose sneaks in. Dude, I've been doing the deed and a dog humped on the bed and started humping me while I was in the midst of what was happening. Yeah. I can't say I've had anything like that happen, but, but lately I'll tell you what has been happening. I mean. The Tiny House Studios is not just a recording studio. It is also the home in which I live in. And my cat, for whatever reason, has decided... Luna? Yeah. Yeah. That whenever it's time for me to get down and dirty... Yep. That she wants to lay beside us. Huh. And it's the... It's... It's just the weirdest thing, man. Wonder if she uh wonder if she knows that you're talking about her. Probably. Luna. No. Kitty. Yeah. Cats and cats and dogs are, are very different. They're so different. We only had one cat my whole life and it was very short lived. It got hit on the road. Oh man. Basically one of those like neighbor cats came over, started taking care of it, you know. Mm-hmm. Neighbor cat decided it finally wanted to go back over to to the neighbor's house to play with all the other cats. Didn't go so well. No, nah, should have stayed home. Should have stayed home. Poor kitty. Poor kitty. Anyways, um, yeah, splat. Always had dogs though. <laughs> but cats are interesting, man. They're, they're they've got such thing. odd personalities, dude. But I love them. They're cute. We've always had good like outdoor cats. Yeah, yeah. We've got one that roams uh roams around where we live right now, and. uh it's wild, man. I got a video of it last year. We thought it was about to get a mouse or something, you know, mole, whatever. Yeah. And it's in the backyard and it's sneaking. But there's like a little hill. So technically, I couldn't even see what it was sneaking up on. Mm-hmm. So I get Blake. I'm like, hey, watch this. The cat's about to get something. And I get my phone out and record. And, Dude, it's a squirrel. No way. Two of them. It caught. It's crazy, man. It goes after him. You see both gray squirrels like, Shoom! like. Do like a figure eight, and when the one comes around, dude, like this, the cat just bam, whaps him, nails it. Dude, dude had cats it, are had awesome it dead hunters. Within like five seconds. It's so intense to watch them, man. Oh, it was amazing to watch it. Our Done. our giant big fat barn cat. I'm I'm talking like when she walks the her, black and white one. Yeah, her oh, yeah. stomach. She came out meowing at me. Yeah, <laughs> she did. It so scared friendly. me when she, when I pulled up in the driveway. I looked over and I was like. Oh, oh! She's like a fire truck man, yeah. but she's a big cat. She's, she's big a kitty. big cat, but she is lightning quick still. Really? Like she brings us presents all the time. Like whether it be a mouse or a rabbit or a bird, I mean, she is a mighty hunter. Rabbits, yeah, get some. Yeah, no kidding. She is so quick, dude. Pretty small ones though. Yeah, for the most part. But that's still amazing, man. That's yeah, in its own sense. Um, jeez, I almost hit a rabbit on the way here. It's See, about that time. It's warming up. Yep. Oh, it's... Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, next week, Woo. having our first guest on the show, episode nine. Don't want to give away too nah. much, but we're taking another field trip. Yeah, next week, we're going to have a guest um, taking a field trip. We're taking a walk through the woods, and that's all we're going to say. For now. Hmm. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun, dude. Like I said, it's always good to get out in nature. Yeah, and our field trip went so well last week. Why not take another? Yeah. Shout out to uh, to your dad for helping us rig all that up. Yeah. He was a big I, yeah, help for that. Yeah, just wanted to say that. Shout out to your dad. Yeah, it Thank turned you. out awesome. Yeah. No, it was a good time. It was, it was better than what I thought, really. For sure. Going through that tunnel, I'm just like, whew. Dude, I mean, 
The video will never do it justice. No, I had a few people that were like, did you really hold your breath? I was like, yeah, I'm serious. I was like, I really held it. I didn't I didn't push any air through. Like, you could have breathed through your nose. And I'm like, I didn't. You could have. I could have. But you didn't. That was an honest hold. But that... I clenched. That view, <laughs> when you burst through that tunnel, man... There's nothing like it. It's fucking gorgeous, There's dude. There's nothing Seeing like it. Seeing the stadium and the science center and the north side That's how you should get to come over. in every city. Oh, yeah. Every city should be like a tunnel... Like, you don't get to see the city and just, boom. When we go to New York, because that's going to be a good old boys episode, you know, far, far down the line, I want to take Earl over here to New York for the first time. Never been. You go through the Liberty Tunnels, and you blast through those, and then you see the entirety of the New York skyline, and it's fucking awesome. It's very... It's Never different than the Pittsburgh experience because Pittsburgh's up close. Yeah. When you blast through the Liberty Tunnels and you see New York, it's like across the river, but it's still equally as awesome. I bet that's pretty cool. I've never been. We have to do it. Yeah. I'm not a and big... And we will uh, document it. Not a big crowded city guy. No, but I know where to take you. I know I the places you. to go. My trust will be in you. Um, we'll have to do that. That's going to be down the road from here for yeah. now. But we will It'll go. It'll be a while from now. It will, but we will go. I really want to see the 9-11 memorial. There's tons of stuff I want to see. Yeah. Um, when we were flying, what airport? Where were we going? I saw the Statue of Liberty from an airplane. That's awesome. Was that New Jersey? or That was going in. Oh, that's when we were going to Boston. We could see it. But um, that's yeah, it was way pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it was really cool. I forgot about that. Boston was cool. I've never been. Oh, I've never been any more north than Buffalo. Okay. Yeah. I had to go there to get my passport the day of. We always ski to a place that's, I mean, it's not far from, but it's close to Buffalo. I always get, um, it's a traditional Buffalo thing, uh, beef on wick. Have you ever heard of that? Uh-uh. It's a Buffalo bread. I think it's uh, whack. Whack or wick. It's like kind of salty bread, but it's, oh, it's so good. You get It's like the beef au jus. You got the juice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, you're just total animal when you eat that shit. It sounds awesome. Like, you don't even have to have manners. Like, if someone expects you to dip your sandwich in sauce and not drip it everywhere... They can go fuck themselves. I was just about to say, they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> so, you really get that sandwich in there. Luna, you're making me... You're starting to make me nervous. me nervous. Me too. You can just chill with me for now. But you just go all in, you know what I mean? And you just do It's like that. an Italian dipper. Yeah. Oh, we got a wedding coming up. That's where it's at. Um, I don't think it's over a holiday weekend, but... I know we'll be there for a couple of days. It's going to be crazy having baby two, man, to travel. It's starting to set in. I'm starting to realize with one, how easy it is. Like now that, you know, when before two is ever created, you're like, this shit's hard. Double the car. Seats. I'm never going to have another kid. You're going to be an only child. You're stuck with it. I'm sorry. And then, you know, boom, another one's coming. And you're like, shit, how do I do this? You know, you guys, what, four, four? Three, yeah, three. No, four. 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 Yeah, four. Spread uh, out throughout ten years too. Yeah. So your parents' props. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna be a a three. Me and my brother, we were two. Casey, they were three. Three girls. Um, dude, she's just loving it, man. Stretching out. She's showing off for the camera. Oh, she's a big old show off. Excuse me. If we ever do a calendar shoot, like if we have a good old boys calendar. That'd be pretty sweet. Dude. Just yeah, an idea. I was thinking, if we ever hit 10,000 subscribers... Dude, that's we, crazy. We gotta do some kind of like... Uh, you know oh how the gosh. New York firefighters do the sexy calendar shoots? Yes. We gotta fucking do that. No, if we ever... Uh, that's 10,000. Yeah, so let's just <laughs> let's just put it in the books now. When we... When... When... When we hit 10,000 subscribers, we are doing a sexy New York style... Firefighter shoot. I feel more comfortable with that now. I was going to say like a thousand because I thought that'll be hard to reach. But now I feel really comfortable because 10,000. We'll get there. Man, nervous if that happens. But yeah, I would do it. It'd be fun. We've both been hitting the gym hard. Yeah, I've been. Well, that's I think why I'm also had have the knots and I'm hurt again. But um, also Blake kicking my ass. I mean, literally, he wrestles with me every night. He's like, he'll stop and go. Dad, do you want to wrestle? <laughs> and he always takes his shirt off and he goes, Hulk angry. <laughs> it's 
fun. But last night he was jumping off the see, it still hurts, man. It still hurts. I'm a little crooked. Yeah, it it, it sucks. It sucks. I'm gonna get a crook in the neck. We've have a uh I think it's called Max Max something. But uh it's the vibrating thing, you know, you can crank it up. Yeah. I, I was doing it like Is it like a Theragun? Yep. Love those. It was like three in the morning. I get the gun out. I hit the one spot because this is when it started. I like woke up at like three in the morning. Oh, you know, doing one of those numbers. Like I knew exactly what was wrong. Definitely I'm like, something. man, it happened again. I know what to do when it happens. You know, I need to get up and move it. Keep it loose. Yeah. So I'm like, man, chiropractor, they're open. Hopefully I can get in, get the gun out. I hit it. It made me sick. I went right to the bathroom. I was like, oh, I'm throwing up. No way, man. Oh, it was that bad. But even when she, she, I got there to her today after some home, home working, Casey, she's got every oil she's got, every right. deep cooling rub. Shout out to the wife. But this morning she, uh, she got me to work. I mean, I was, I was hurting, man. I'm glad I'm in a, uh, like a paper pusher almost, but we're doing a lot of construction this week. So carried a lot of stuff. I actually did a lot of steps. Um, but, um. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, shout out to uh, the chiropractor. Have you ever watched like some of those chiropractor videos? Oh, they... dude, yeah, I love it. Isn't it? Like I said, uh, it's like, very satisfying. It is. It is. Like I'll sit there and watch them and be like, I want to have that done to me. When they do that strap, my Fuck, chiropractor yeah. says that's not good. Like that's not behind a... the neck. Where but they... I want to try it. Oh man! And then they do. The... I've seen them even do the one like under their chin. That's what I'm talking about, where they, like, stand behind them and, like, man. yank it, and they, like, feel like they gained an extra in- inch of height. Do do yourself a favor and watch, like, chiropractic videos on YouTube. <laughs> Guys that really have their shit down, like, recorded and mic'd up good, you can really hear it. Oh. It's so satisfying. <laughs> oh. Some people, they really get them, and it's just, like... It's crazy, oh. man. She does, like, the... She'll take my leg and put it between her two legs. And then give it, oh, that's, that's always the finisher. She, when she puts your leg between her two legs, that's the finisher. I love it. Tell me more, Glenny. Dude. Tell that, me more about this chiropractor that I need to go yeah. to. S- straight and on She the giving back. you happy endings too there, bud? Dude, that's like, I feel like that's when I really feel like I'm, I'm straightened back out. But uh, Can I tell you something? Yeah. I yeah. have a friend. Who has had a happy ending from a <laughs> massage place before? I, I don't know anyone. I don't know a single person. I mean, I rode up to I their house. I almost don't even think they're real. I didn't either. I, I swear know. I didn't they're, fucking believe they were real either. I take either. this back. They are in Vegas. Dude, he they was not in Vegas. in Vegas. He was definitely not in Vegas. And I rode up to his house, and I fucking walked through the door, and I sat down, and the first thing that he said was, I got a massage today. And I was like, hmm, cool. And he was like, I got a happy ending. And I was like, no fucking way. And that's it was like unreal. the person yes, that I, I would, I and mean, I know that he wasn't he was lying. Telling the truth? Oh, for sure. Because it's the person that I would not have guessed in a million years would have ever done it. Is he a good look? I mean, just being honest. I mean, is he, do you a feel very like handsome a, a, a gentleman? Chick? Okay. So a girl would like be into that. Absolutely. Oh, don't get me wrong. There's ones out there. I mean, that's not, he did not choose this place seeking it out. It. No, oh no, no, I I totally believe that. But I was blown away because, like you, I <laughs> was, was like, that's not real. That's he just was shit too. that's in the fucking movies. He was too blown. No, literally. literally. Okay, this like said. this makes me want to ask you something. What? I've I've heard some controversy online lately, and they're giving HJs. <laughs> That's just funny with an HJ. A bad name. I and, and, say, say, and I'm just here to say... HJ just took me back to, like, junior high. That sometimes a handy can be handy. You know? Sometimes a beach is just a little bit too much effort. Under the blanket, no tug job here. I'm not even going there. I'm saying if you... If you impose the correct technique <laughs> and use the correct supplies, an HJ... Can almost blow away a blowy <laughs> almost any day of the week. Se- almost better than sex. That's what I'm saying. Uh-huh. And I, so 
I'm making a stance right here and right now. Make it make HJ's. If cool if you're again. gonna talk shit about an <laughs> HJ, you just haven't had a good one. You haven't had a practice, HJ. <laughs> you haven't asked for what you really want. Oh man. Get That's some strawberry so scented lube and call it a day, yeah, buddy boy. Dude. Some old nasty lube you found at the freaking dollar store drug mart. It'll do the job. <laughs> Leaves a rash when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that Tom experience quite yet, but I'm sure it's going to happen no. at some point in time. All the fragrance. Oh, man. Can I just tell you? I, I don't want to like touch on the subject because I really don't care, but it's just like um, it's really hit me lately with my wife. Like over the years, she's really been all about, you know, the laundry detergent, the toothpaste. We use like thieves everything, mm-hmm. you know, cleaner, toothpaste, and all that stuff. No additives. Yeah, but clean. I never really realized what she was really getting away from as much, but it's mostly like fragrance and like the additives. So, I, recently we got some. Um, she got some cloth diapers that mm-hmm. someone didn't use or partially used, whatever. So she's like, yeah, maybe we'll give these a try. We had them the first time we had Blake, but we didn't use them. Um, so because the idea is kind of gross, but it, like when my dis- dad was growing up, they only had cloth diapers. It is, and he had ten fucking siblings, dude. Yeah, dude. So if you think That's about a lot it, of it's scrubbing. like it's not how it's nothing new compared to how things used to be done, right? But to us, it's like, why the hell would you do that when you have you just get ones and throw them away? You don't have to. It's wash. not even a thought. Yeah, you don't even have to wash the poop off of it. Yeah, you just throw it away. Like me, I'm going wipes and all. Why would I want to do that if I could just throw it away? Out of sight, out of mind. So, anyways, um, these people would wash them. Dude, the the fragrance, the detergent when you're not used to it, it's crazy, crazy, man. Like I was blown away. It's crazy how when you don't smell, and I work around women, mm-hmm. so like I smell perfumes. I mean, it's not that I'm not around stuff, but, like, you know, I don't even see hardly people burn candles anymore, but people still burn candles. Dude, this one time, I fell asleep. But Casey, like, hasn't burned a candle in, like, years. I fell asleep with a girlfriend of mine in a small bedroom we were renting at that point in time, or she was renting at that point in time, I was staying over with her. We fell asleep with a candle burning, and I woke up, and my boogers were black, because there was, like, soot in the air from the candle burning all night. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding, dude. It's like super bad for you. Terrible. Yeah. I never realized it. Super bad for you. Terrible. And honestly, in college, we were harped upon to not wear cologne or perfume to auditions. Because it messes with like your your nose and your vocals and everything like that? Not only that, but the the pianist and accompanist. Like for the off chance that they might be allergic to... And it might fuck them up or fuck somebody else up. Never thought they of like it. tell you not to wear cologne or perfume. Into We're an getting audition. to that day and age where it's becoming more known. Like I said, I don't want to get like too on the topic, but it's just crazy to me. I just wanted to mention it. Like I got a lot of shit. I still get a lot of shit. People will be like, "Oh, your wife does like the oils," and it's like she doesn't do the oils. I mean, the oils do us, but yeah, no. And I mean, I mean, I've had to real. completely change shampoos it, because it's like, more than just like the oils. It's just like using like all natural stuff, and then being around like other things and being like, "Whoa!" Like we we got a, a shampoo recently, just a normal shampoo we would have bought at the store, mm-hmm. like we used to. Dude, my head broke out in this rash. That's hive. what I'm talking about, dude. Read. It was the crazy it. And on the shampoo, it's like all natural green tea, shampoo. Fuck that shit, dude. Dude, my head was so messed up, man. I've had to start using super. You should have saw the bumps. Like they were like past. Like like at first, I was like, oh, I got like an ingrown hair, and then like all of a sudden, the whole back of my head was just inflamed. Dude, I've been there, and like scaly. It was just for my shampoo, and then I change, and seriously, within two days, it's fucking gone. Yep. But the fact that like that's. In shampoo. It's supposed to be, like, good for you. You know what I mean? Completely fucks me up. Oh, yeah. I'm also sensitive, and I think it... Same with food, man. Same with food. But I think it's our heritage, too. We're, like, Irish and and German and Scottish and and English, I would assume. Just based on 
the color of your beard alone is what I'm going to guess that your heritage is. I mean, if you do a close-up for me right now. We got lots of red in here. Look at the red in that mustache. You and me too, man. Solid. Just total solid. I'm really proud of it too. Scottish. I mean, in a while, in, in a few years here, they're going to be able to call us Redbeard. I hope. But I, mine, it comes in. You can see I got the, I got the gray right here. I love it when it comes in because it's all black. And then I got gray. It's nice. It's I distinguished. Love it. I love the gray. Salt and pepper's here, man. Dude, I can't wait until I got some salt and pepper. Uh, I don't know. I'm waiting for it, man. I've had it for a long time. When did you get your first? I mean, I had it when I was 20. Yeah. See, uh, I have one little patch of like 12 hairs in the back of my head that are gray, but I think that's it so far. Dude, I mean, you can see the sides of my head. I like it. It looks good. I've had some compliments, and I've had some uh, some looks as well. I don't know. I think you it know, looks good you on know you, You know what bank. I say? I, I really love, like, you know, people that know me. I, you know, I styled my hair in high school. I did my hair. Proud of it. Whatever. I want to look good. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, I just like having hair. If I could just keep it the hair, I don't care what fucking color it is. That's what I'm saying, If dude. it turns purple. As long as I have hair on my fucking head, I don't give <sighs> a fuck, man. Dude, I'm proud of it, man. My dad, after his, like, you know, uh, cancer treatment and everything. Um, medicine he's on. His hair is growing like crazy. It's crazy, man. He's got more hair than he did. <laughs> than he had before he even started treatment. I'm like, jeez, oh man. He laughed. I, I, gotta, I gotta say this. But, um, you know, because he's an older man. 66. Uh, he was like, yeah, well, when I did do that, I mean, I was all cleaned up. It was kind of nice, you know. He goes, now the... Hair's mine longer than my dick. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, but on your head right now, I said, I can't believe how long it is. His beard's like huge. Nice. Huge. Total Santa Claus beard. But uh, yeah, I just, I want to keep it. So I figured my grandpa on my mom's side, and they always say, I think it's from your mom's side. Yeah. So he he had hair when he passed away. So I'm like, hey, I think I'm, I'm, I got a chance. Yeah, my grandpa still has a pretty good amount of hair. Yeah. He no. sometimes does the swirl, you know, but, like, he still has it. So I'm not When I saw him there the other week, I was like, wow. Yeah. But you saying that now, I'm like, yeah, he does. He still has some hair. Yeah. That's about how my mom's dad was. Still had, like, the, you know, but had hair. Had that's enough what, to comb. That's what I'm saying. Jeez, Blake's into the hair thing right now. Dude, I saw the pictures just in the that shower. Casey posted. Jeez. We, we get a shower together, you know. Um, it's our thing. And, uh. He's got a mirror in there now, and he sits in there. Just meticulously combing. It's like, okay, dude, you're going to comb it off your head. <laughs> but now I can I can literally hear my parents being like, okay, well, like, we got to go. All right, I'm almost ready. Yep. All right, come on. It's got to be perfect. It's gotta be I perfect. mean, it still takes me an hour to get ready in the morning, Put man. gel. It's like... <laughs> Oh, I gotta start over again. Shit, I gotta, I gotta wash, wash my, my hair. Damn Dude, it. how many fucking times? That's you know how a bad many morning. Fucking it's like times. you know the bad mornings. You, like you might as well not even go to school. You might as well not go to work. Dude, and we were growing up in the in sync days when that shit was fucking important. L.A. Looks was the gel I can remember. And oh, it always had the number yeah, on it, buddy. the hold, and uh, or bedhead, bedhead yeah. like extra hold. My mom uh, would get that shit too. It was like extra fancy spray. I use the, still to this day. I use it's yellow. It's uh, um, got to be glued or something. Yeah, it's a yellow one. I Sometimes it's black. It's yellow. But I'm still like, I still do the hair up, you know. And I mean, you got to put a little something, something in there. Hey, Even man. with my hair, as long as it is, it, I put a little if something, I something in it, there. If I have it, I'm doing something with it. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, I just met a kid yesterday. He's, um, it's awesome because the trend, it's been back for the last couple of years, but he, he really wants a mullet. Young kid. Really young. I mean, but he, he wants that mullet. I've been thinking about it myself. I want one. I, I think it's... I'm uh, more nervous about the stage of growing it. Like, I'm not nervous when I would have it. You'll be it's just right. like in the process of growing and how I would look. I like to refer to it as a soccer style haircut. See, I refer to it as a hockey style. A European style haircut? Hmm? A Dude, unisex haircut? I've seen more women maybe with it than guys. <laughs> Sometimes not on purpose. Uh, I just don't think they know what they have. Right. <laughs> I old, like it. Old Kentucky waterfall. 
Um, there's a few good names for mullets. I had a mullet shirt. I'm just about pulling one myself right now. Honestly, if I shaved my sides right now, I'd have a real good mullet. Dude, we came up with a mullet name with a kid when we were growing up. And I kind of feel bad we weren't really making fun of him because he loved his mullet. But he had a, he had a bowl cut. But then over summer, he just let his hair grow in the back. But he kept the bowl cut in the front. Hmm. We called him Bullet. <laughs> For real. Very suiting. But I just remembered that. I went, is that a mullet name? Like Kentucky Waterfall, that's a mullet. Um, what's it called when you're like bald, but you have a mullet? A uh, Scallet. Scallet? Yeah, Scallet. Um, bullet? I mean, Bullet. I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, I've never heard this that is where one before. The, this is where the computer aid would come in. They'd be, like, researching our mullets. But uh, do you know any mullet names? I mean, well, we got the Joe Dirt. Yeah. But there was some, like, legit mullet classifications. I, if I'm going to be real, I'm not very well versed in the mullets. Yeah, see, I, I listened to a lot of mullet talk growing up. Are you familiar with mullet talk? I, I listened Tino to a Martino. lot of DVE. Oh, yeah. But... Mullet talk wasn't the first thing that I think of when I think of I DVE. Love that. I, I won't even do it justice, so I won't say it, but I, I just remember, you know, it'd come on, Dino Martino, welcome to Mullet Talk, you know, and he'd always have like Mario Lemieux come on or something. And yeah. It's just great, man. He'd say, I want you to go home, put on your hockey helmet, and cut anything that protrudes from the top. <laughs> But don't touch the back. <laughs> they asked him the one time. They said, do you think you had back issues due to the weight distribution of when you cut off the mullet over the years? Possibly. He's like, possibly. Dude, mullet talk was great. That's funny. All the skits on DV were great. Dude, they're, they're... They're like borderline. You couldn't have those on the radio now. Very inappropriate. The morning talk show is always the best. That Jim was and always, Randy in the yeah. morning. It's crazy what a radio station does to you in a lifetime. Oh, no doubt. Like if you have that one true radio station, like I, I love country. So like growing up, um, like K one hundred five, it's just never left. It's or always Froggy one hundred four. Yeah, Froggy's been around. K one hundred five was always around a little longer, but then Froggy came about. But DV, just amazing. Always just, my number one. Yep. But then I got XM. Yeah. And, and when changed. I moved on to XM, I stopped listening to DVE. See, I don't listen. I'm not going to sit here and say I listen to the radio in the car. Morning talk during football season, I listen to DVE after a game. Certain Penguins games, I will. Like after game, you know, post show or something like that. But uh, Spotify's on all the time. Yeah. I was just telling the wife, I recently had a, uh, I recently had a family plan for Spotify. I was supporting uh, three, three uh, out of uh, three people out of uh, Waterwell, New Mexico. Wow! It's not a real city. I even saw the one month I went. That Spotify, my Spotify go up, but one of those deals like it's like, uh, whatever you know. Yeah. It's just not like, enough to even care. Like I need it, so I'm not gonna whatever you know. I've got other things on my plate right now. I'm not thinking about. You know, what I just paid for Spotify. Right. You know, not saying I'm fucking pulling money out of my ears, but it's just like life goes on. Um, so then like, you know, another month, you know, probably don't even see it or think about it. And then finally, it's just one morning at work. I'm like, hmm, that's odd. And why, why is this music on my suggested list? <laughs> why? Why? What's all this like Hispanic techno? Why is it all- and it has the list of the people on your plan. Yeah. And it was like phony. It was all like Waterwell, New Mexico. I was so pissed. Damn. I like deep down, I, I remember I took a picture of it. And I was like, I'm going to fucking get in my car. I'm going to drive here. I'm going to fucking beat all your ass. No. But deep down, <laughs> that's what I felt like. I was like, I'm, I'm ready to rage. So got a hold of Spotify. They were cool about it. I actually nice. covered two months for me. Oh, fuck yeah, man. So it was kind of like, well, okay, we're we're back even. Yeah. Plus, I got a few bucks. I'd say. Yeah. So it was awesome. Well, so speaking of being pissed, wherever Waterwell, New Mexico is, if that I don't think it's real, but if it is, shout out. Speaking of being pissed, I say let's take a break, mm-hmm. and we'll be. I need to cool off. Right back. Let's go. Try to steal 
and gentlemen welcome back to the good old boys show we're back we're here we're here we're here we're here we're so present we took a piss break because sometimes when you get to drinking you get to you get to needing to having to take a piss yeah i pounded water today too because i knew i was going to the chiropractor always a good idea plus i drink Before a lot of water after. every day just every day in general stay hydrated something the army always told me stay hydrated huh just do it now, I got to ask you something. Shoot. When you walk into a public restroom, mm-hmm. and there are at least three urinals, which one are you choosing? A, B, or C? I don't ever go middle, so I just always pick a corner. If you pick B, you're a fucking sociopath or a psychopath, and you need to see some sort of mental health specialist. Yeah, you just want someone to be next to you. I mean, this not only goes... If all three are open, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, if all three are It's like rule of thumb. It's like you start left to right, or, the, you know, right to left. And whatever, this not only goes for do. urinals. This goes for ellipticals, treadmills. Exactly. You know... Anything where you can occupy a space and there are more than one, why the fuck are you ever going to choose the middle one? For instance, I picked up, uh, we got food for, uh, we got lunch today. We went and got lunch for, for, it was an employee's birthday, so we got lunch from Sumo. Dude, I love Sumo. Sumo is amazing. I went there for Uh, Valentine's Day. Shout out Sumo. Shout out to Sumo. I have a friend that works there. I've never been disappointed with Sumo. No. No, I need to talk to them. They always give me pot. I don't drink it, but um, someone does. I take it to work, and here you go. But they always give us a lot of like free pop. I'll be nice. like, oh, here you go. You know. It's like, um, but we order from them a lot. Um, so to, oh, what was I saying? So today I walk in there. There's three people in there, and there are seats to sit on. Okay. To wait for your food for your pickup, and it was like second nature. You know what I mean? Like the one person was on the end. Then the next person sat like a few seats down, and I automatically sat on the other end. Yeah. I mean, bus seats, yes. subway. Yeah. I mean, any public situation where you can choose to either be in the corner where somebody can choose the one away from you it, first. There's people that do it. I purposely went into. And I always feel bad, and then I feel like anyone that comes in, like, oh, why is that guy peeing in the, in the stall? You know but what I it makes me rest- want to do, Glennie? 
It makes me want to smack him upside the fucking head. <laughs> just walk up and just Anytime! Go, oh, boom. Whether it be the urinal, the bus seat, the elliptical, <laughs> the treadmill. You know what I want to fucking do, bud? Dude. I want to run up behind them full force and to give them a wham, a bam. Thank you, ma'am. Go fuck yourself. If you're that person, go fuck yourself. That's true, man. That's oh. how I really feel. That's that deep. really grinds that, my I was gears. Just about to I say fucking that. hate it when people do that, man. Yeah, it pisses me off. They have zero sense of self. You know what I want to start doing? Tell me. It's just pulling my pants all the way down when I'm at a girl. <laughs> how weird is that? Like, tell me this, honestly, and just be for real. Just seriously be for real. Like, try to say, like, we don't know each other, and we're at... A baseball game. No, we're at a local restaurant. Okay. We're at Pondy's. We're at Pondy's. And there are only two you're urinals. Eating you're eating dinner? I'm eating dinner. We don't know each other. Nope. But you're eating dinner, and you kind of see me. You see that, that I'm normal. You know, I'm having conversation with my wife. Average Joe. I'm eating dinner. Okay. I'm eating dinner. Okay. okay. Put yourself in this situation. Come on. You, gotta, you don't know me. I'm dropped in, but I'm there. Okay. Rip Pondy's. 30 minutes goes by. We're both drinking a beer. At least. And you're close. You, you hear me talking to my wife. You even know she's my wife. Okay. You figure that out. You're like, oh, that's, just, that's that guy's wife, you know. Next thing you know, it, it's like simultaneous. Boom. I get up. But you don't know I'm going to the restroom. You have no idea. But you just happen to kind of see. You might even, like, when I get up. We make eye time contact, and it's just kind of like a, a bro thing. Like, sometimes you see it, and it's just kind of like, it's nothing. You give them the noise. You do. It's just kind of like a, you make eye contact. It's like, what's up? Yeah. Like, you know, no words. It's just a quick, chicks don't do that. Just a slight acknowledgement. I notice guys do that. Chicks don't. It's just a little. It is. You might not even know the person, but just the fact, like, he was probably just, like, glaring off, but then you guys happen to just cross paths. It's just like, oh, it's like, what's up? Yeah. No, yeah, no. But uh, so I I pan off. You you hit me with a what's up? Just we get a quick nod. It's like a minute goes by. And all of a sudden you're like, shit, no, I gotta pee. You totally forget about even seeing me. You don't know. You don't know I was going to the bathroom. You walk in. I'm pissing at the urinal. I got my pants all the way down to my ankles. Do, do you say something? Would you honestly say something? Would you Would you say like? Would you laugh? One, would you laugh? Two, would you say something? Three, would you walk out? Three, would you walk out? Because me personally, I think if I open the door, because some restrooms are set up differently. Some you can like literally open them. And it's like, dude, even if the girls, if, when the guy's walking out, if the girls look in, they could see you pissing. I've been in bars like that. Yep. Big bathroom, I find another place to go and stay. Yeah, small bathroom. I'm probably gonna be like, oh fuck, and probably like do a quick like. Oh, I'm and gonna giggle and then use the toilet. I'm gonna walk out <laughs> in a small bathroom. In a small bathroom, I'm okay. walking out. I'm gonna because if I know, because think I already said like true. me and you are sitting close. True, 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 true. true. Sorry, so I, I forgot the yeah, I forgot the situation. The scenario here. The scenario. scenario. If it's a small bathroom, we've already made eye contact. Did the like so you know you're gonna have okay, to go here's, back to the here's table the other thing. Here's the and other see thing. See me after this. Here's the other thing. <laughs> if I walk in, see your bare ass, do you turn around and make eye contact with me then? Because if that's the case, I'm fucking turning right around, <laughs> bud. Because that's an open invitation that I'm just not ready for. <laughs> Oh, but if you're hold just on, staring hold straight on, forward hold and you're just doing your business, that's a different story. I I'm just gonna give you your time and space. I totally hear like a, like a, a uh, I don't know what song would be playing on the jukebox, but like the door opens and I'm pissing bare ass, like just pants down. But like she's got a smile <laughs> and it seems to me reminds me. No, no, not even that. Like, 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 a, even like a meatloaf song or like a, a, I don't know, something I just can't even think of. It's so good. But it's playing. The door opens. It creaks. Like, it's one of those old, it's like, and I turn. Oh, that hurts. And I turn. And 
and I'm just it's that slow turn. I'll turn like See, but here's the thing. And I'm pissing and I'm pissing with my pants all the way down to if, my ankles. If we're talking the way Do you, know you can't the... even turn over your shoulder right now without turning your whole body. I got my neck brace on. <laughs> I you turn, have to turn full. I turn full body. I mean, there's still di- still peeing with the stream and I that's go That's a big difference cuz. Hey. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I, I would never do. It. No, no, no. I've been in some uh I've been in some weird uh Do you know anyone that's like done some like nasty pee stuff in a bathroom like been like ah I can't play. like you know maybe pee on the wall or something like, no like what an asshole no. I would never do I that. mean I've walked into a, a restroom and seen that it's been completely covered in someone else's urine before and thought to myself who the fuck would ever do that <laughs> Are you one of no, those people, fuck, no. I've never done that. But I know I've been around. I've been in that scenario. I've been in that situation. I don't know. Where you funny. thought to yourself, what if I just pissed all over the wall instead of the toilet? No, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? You ever think about that? I've seen it go down. Like, um, I've seen it. I've, I've, I've seen that situation is what I'm saying. I've, I've only it. ever walked into the aftermath, I can say. Yeah, I don't know. But can I, I tell know. you what I would never what that. the scenario That's earlier made me think of? What? It's a scarring memory of mine. Okay. I'm not going to mention the show specifically. Oh, I'm this not is going to show you're in. I'm not going to mention the theater specifically. Uh-huh. And I'm not going to mention any people specifically. But this is an experience that I went through. In my lifetime, I won't say the age that I was at either, so that I'm not giving anything away. I was doing a show. Okay. I had gotten my makeup done. I had gotten everything ready. I had gotten my mic put on. I had gone through the warm-up process that I needed to do. I had gone through the lift drills that I needed to go through, and I had gone through the fight drills that I had needed to gone through. I mean, Bruce Buffer, it's time. I can't give that justice, but it was time. So It was ready. You were ready to go. I walk into my dressing room, Yeah. and what do I see? But two people going at it oh. over the dressing room counter. That's cool. And And, you just walk out? And I, yeah, I just walked out. So, like, that was my... Did you even say, like, hey, good for you? No. I was just, like, so shocked that I was, like, ugh. Oh. And just turned about face and got the fuck out of there. So, to answer your question from before, I think I would probably just turn about face and and get the fuck out of there. Yeah, same here. Like, but I just, I just wondered in that scenario. I was just making a scenario up. I was just thinking of that. It, I just it thought, hit really close to home, man. That's funny. Wouldn't that be <laughs> funny, though, if you went somewhere next and all of a sudden you walk in the bathroom and there's a dude fucking pissing with his pants all the way down to his ankles? If I'm going to be completely honest with you, there's... Like, if we did it in kindergarten like when we were younger, why can't we do it when we're older? When is the like, last why time... why is it frowned upon? When is the last time you pissed your pants and or pissed the bed and or pissed where and when you shouldn't have? <laughs> Cause I got a doozy of a story for you, buddy. I was just I was just thinking about this because uh, me and a friend recently had the conversation about um basically poop, pooping our pants. Okay, you know me and this. It individual. happens. Yeah, I, it's an, it's a very unfortunate thing. You, I, I like. Honestly, Especially with the American diet being what it is at this uh, point in time. And I wasn't even America. I, I basically had like dysentery. I was in Iraq. Oh. Like, you get sick when you get over there. It's just, you know, it's you get there. You're just like, from the water alone, sick. I imagine. Yeah. Like, you just get sick. It smells like shit when you're flying in. I can only imagine. I mean, we're burning our own shit. Literally, we burn our own shit. Wow. And, um, anyways, he was like, man, I'll, I'll never forget that day you shit yourself on patrol. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't forget that. It's like poop, poop your pants PTSD. Yeah. But it's just like, it's one, it's hot out. Two, you're just like, you're already sick. Like, days off were like nothing. Like, when I say we stayed on, you know, Mead was us. It was our own platoon. And uh, so, like, there wasn't a lot of days off. Um, you, you just, everyone was, someone else was usually feeling the same way you were, granted. So that was another reason to suck it up. But, like, 
you weren't the only guy that w- was probably going to shit himself. So that was another thing. It was like, well, at least I'm not the only guy that maybe shit his <laughs> pants this week. Like, you know, seven other guys probably didn't that month. But, shit. dude, I just, I'll never forget it, man. It was just like boiling up and it was just like there was people around and you're just like such a panic mode dude you're just like oh, if i don't find a toilet in less than 60 <gasps> seconds i'm fucked <gasps> shit it's happening it's happening it's just like oh. Woo-hoo. <laughs> it's like you want something dude it's like uh. it's over except for this it was like man it's going down my leg damn it it's how like how long until you could change Oh, we were out there for like four hours. I'm not lying. No yeah, way, so I got bud. in the spot and go figured it was when we stopped. And um we'd just been in country, dude. Like we What been, did you do? Just like had shit go down my freaking And you just sat there and dealt with it for four hours? I stood just like this when I was shitting myself, dude, like a G. No fuck. <sighs> Yeah, like straight up. But like when I said I was panicking, like it was just like, that's what I said, dude. I got like poop my pants PTS, dude. dude. It was just like, uh, uh, uh. I can still remember like oh, looking, looking fuck. like our interpreter was standing there, K Dog, and it was just like, man, I'm pooping my pants right now. It's like, shit myself right now, man. Oh my God. 20 years bloody. old, 21 years old, I think, you know, 20 years old, pooping my Just pants. Just a full stream running into your socks. Yeah, nothing solid about it, you know, not much. I mean, yeah, there was stuff there. That's a total, you take that uniform and it, and it, and it got burnt, you know. We, we stood around it, we played taps, and we fucking... The most ceremonial thing well, Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Her. Like, there was nothing on that oh uniform. Oh, my gosh. Stripped my shit off, and it was like, I'm burning these pants. Like, it was so gross, I have dude. never experienced that before. I mean, not since kindergarten. Like, there was a point in time in kindergarten <sighs> where I did feel shit trickle down my leg and into my <laughs> sock. Oh, dude, it's like, it, I can still feel it. But as an adult, I've only shit myself twice. Yeah, and, and like, it was only because I trusted a fart that I shouldn't have, and it was just a little squeaker <laughs> that sh- that came out that shouldn't have. Dude, My sure. sphincter thought that it was clear, and boy, oh boy, it wasn't clear. Anyone, I can honestly say this: like, I mean, that day I shit myself. I mean, I basically like sharted. Like, it was just like, oh, 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 shit! Like, yep, uh, boop myself. Just the quiet but, fountain, dude. To shart yourself, I know someone. <laughs> that full on shit themselves. I would love to say who it was, man. Not that <sighs> it, not that it matters or changes the story, but it was just like it such just a, makes it all the better. It was such a calming moment. Like you didn't believe it, but like then once they were like, "No, no, it happened." No, I'm I I just shit myself, and it's like everyone kind of turned around. It was like, "What? Are you serious?" Yeah, it was like, "Yeah, I shit my pants." <laughs> We're like, how? How? So and he's like, like I was farting, but it just, it just, I know it's in there. And we're like, all right, well, we'll get where we're going. And yeah. So the first time it happened to me as an adult, I was probably 25. Okay. And I was moving home from New York for the first time because I had just gotten off of tour. The big city. So I was spending a couple months at home for the summer. Before I went and tried to audition again in the fall. Okay. And I took my sister and my youngest brother to New York with me to grab all my shit in my apartment and throw it in my car with me before we all drove back. Very traditional to do. Anytime my brother moved, I I try to be part of it or like go or come back. Or yeah, in, in it's that just a fun thing fun. sometimes. It always is, especially the trip. Yeah. Yeah. And like we, we had a couple days to explore New York. Yep. And we got to see Broadway shows. Like, it was a great experience. Good time. Along with, you know, the the terrible couple hours of moving that it was. In any case, the last meal that we had before we hit the road was Taco Bell. Oh. And I love me some fire sauce. And there was a point in time in my life where, I, with every bite of Taco Bell... you It was traditional. You just... I was putting an entire packet of fire sauce Ooh. on every bite. Well, maybe that's a little extreme. I was getting excessive. Like, I'm a little like a, and I don't do the fire sauce. Like, I may be a mild guy. Okay. Maybe. And that's a maybe. Yeah. If you're feeling it. Yeah, but, um, oh, a so, whole, whole freaking pack? I mean. Are was, you talking like soft taco? When I ordered Taco Bell, I would say this verbatim. I would say, can I please get 
a shit ton of, food. of fire sauce. <laughs> and they would say yes. And I would say, I need I need you to understand that I need a shit ton I'm of going, fire sauce. Every bite I take, I'm going to squeeze a whole packet on the bite. I mean, I got Taco Bell today, and I didn't specifically say that I need a shit ton of fire sauce. Do you want to know how many fucking packets of fire sauce that I got? Five. Two. Let's see. Let's Do you know uh, how many items that were ordered? At least 12. Yeah, see, it should be like two packs per. Per fucking item. Yeah. Dude, the mild sauces, I swear they like throw them out like they're candy. Because that's all I get. It hurts but, like, my feelings. I, I just say like, yeah, can I get mild? And I look in the bag and there's like 10. I'm like, well, thanks. Uh, I only got one thing, but thanks for these. Ten- you should see our drawer. I wish I could post the picture of our drawer at home and of our fridge right just now. Just full of mild sauce? Full. Full. I mean, it, it's Giant, gotten to the point crazy. where I've just had to buy bottles. If anyone needs any mild sauce, head to Glennies. Call me. I got gotcha. you. So. If you're in a pinch. We were on our way home from New York. Mm-hmm. The last meal that we had was Taco Bell. Granted, we were eating a lot of dollar slice before that. Yeah. Which, um, I mean, we'll also run right through you. Oh, yeah. If you, you're not careful. Too much dairy. It'll, it'll do it to it'll you. It'll do you. But, oh, yeah. Dude, that's one thing that I'm excited for you to experience is New York dollar slice. Yeah. So we, we run up some Taco Bell. I like me some pie. I was having my sister as a co pilot rip me a, a fire sauce per bite. And, um, the fire sauce co pilot. We make it to the lock 24. You're we close. make it to like less than three minutes away from home. I mean, you're close. And you know what I did? Oh, you know what I me. did, Earl? I just, I lifted the cheek, I spread them open while I was driving. Cruise control, and I thought it was just going to leave a little bit of pressure. Like one of those little church pews. Just, just like... a little. <whistles> yep. Anything. Just to leave a little bit of the pressure, because we were so close. And I thought that's all it was. I thought, oh, I did good. Just real soft. Just, just I did real... good. Just a little. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all I thought it was going to be. Maybe even softer. Maybe just like a little. But maybe a minute later, once I shifted my weight again, I felt a little bit of, you know, yeah. just a little bit of, when I shifted Thund- my weight. Thunderstruck started playing. And. And your your whole downstairs was totally. Everything went into slow motion. Oh. And the moment I knew it happened for sure. No. Was when I stepped out of the car. Oh, man. And my brother and sister erupted in laughter because was... there was a silver dollar in my white shorts. Oh, white shorts to boot, dude. You better believe it, oh, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Of just poo 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 platter served up Taco Bell style. I feel bad for... I forget who that was. That UFC fighter. There's been numerous athletes that have, like, pooed themselves. A basketball player did it recently. But, like, I mean, you're out. You're, you know, playing a physical sport. There must just be also something about the color white because I wrestled. Yeah. I wrestled my freshman year. I freshled or I freshled. Do you fresh? I, I done freshled. When I was a freshler, <laughs> I, that's I, a freshman wrestler. If I you didn't wrestled know. my freshman <laughs> then you're year of high school. Soft, softler, a shoffler, and then a junesler. And then this a, is hurting my brain. And then a scene, a scene wrestler, wrestler. a scene slur. So this is when you were a freshler. I was a freshler. Just a freshler. And I was... Did you poo yourself as a freshler? No, 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 no. Jeez. Uh, because I was making my way from light heavyweight to 191. So I was on a big weight cut. But I think I had hit 191 at this point in time. And we were wrestling against Oak Glen. And... The Bears. They had all white singlets. mm and we had white and red singlets, so the, a lot of our singlets were white, too. Glenn's blue and gold. Blue and gold, but yeah. their yeah. home singlets were white with, like, blue and gold trim. Okay. This heavyweight kid, dude, wearing an all-white singlet, fucking shit <laughs> all <laughs> over the place, man. It was the funniest thing that I'd ever seen. I mean, it's funny when it's not you. It was hilarious. I mean, you're scarred for life. If you shit yourself in a wrestle, what do you guys in call front of wrestlets? like hundreds of people? Is that what they were called? Wrestlets? Singlets. Singlets. Yeah, just a just, singlet. Just, just this little have, I, I leotard-looking thing. Me playing basketball, 
I, I'd even feel comfortable just only wearing the jersey. Really? Yeah, because I still had like a little chub. You know what I mean? It was like that that wavy, like I wasn't toned. I mean, I wasn't looking good in that singlet. I can tell you that, bud. Yeah, so like I always used to get prompt thinking like, man, I would have just been uncomfortable as hell. Like just people looking at me. Just man, being and like, we were making oh, fun of the kids who were wearing cups. Oh, man. So, like, most of us would just wear, like, <laughs> compression Cause it looks shorts. Because it looks weird. You're just yeah. like, fuck, dude. It's, it's like, like, why do you got a codfish in your pants, bro? <laughs> like, what the fuck's wrong with you, man? You're not getting punched in the nuts while you're wrestling. Just, like, fake, like, ha! Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not that serious. You know, as I was going to ask you, like, would it be, uh, what, what happens if we're wrestling and I fart? I mean, you just keep going. You laugh it off. <laughs> there was a kid that I wrestled with. I would with. purposely fart. There was a kid that I wrestled with. Because I would with. think it'd be like an advantage. One kid I wrestled with wouldn't wear deodorant for like a week leading up to the match. To just be So smelling. that he could like put his armpit over people's mouths and noses so that they like wouldn't know what to do because they were in such distress. Isn't no that crazy? Joke. Yeah. Dude, wrestlers do and the crazy thing. And he was He was like... A force to be reckoned with, man. He was fucking an animal. He we looked like we didn't Wolverine. have wrestling at uh, our school, but uh, I know you guys did. You guys produced, you know, state champions. Yeah, I mean, known it was for a big it. deal. Yeah, known for it for a while. I was a um, terrible wrestler for a long but time. You still got to do it. Taught you the, yeah, the skills. It was a lot of fun. I got to go like, um, you know, it's like level two combatives, which is jujitsu, but learned it. When I got into the army mm-hmm. and then fell in love with it, oh, I dude. realized that it's, it's more of a, like just a, a step. It's like dancing. Yeah. Like jujitsu and wrestling, granted two different things. I mean, true, but you're still making those movements. You're still, you know, it's still a lot of involvement of the same thing, but yeah. Um, I fell in love with that. Yeah. I got to take a few jujitsu classes after I was wrestling. Yeah. Like, you know, a Couldn't little bit, a, a, a few years after my I wrestling career. I'd kind of like to get on the mat again. I'd I just talk to Me a, too. a buddy I miss about it so this. Much, man. Just to roll around. Just to, like, go through a few. I can still, like, memorize a lot of stuff. I mean, just to, like, you know, from arm bars to, I mean, different moves like that. It's just, like, i like to just get on a mat and just roll around. Glenny, I want to talk some celebrity shit. You want to fuck one, kill one, marry one? No. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we, I'm it, sure. I'm sure we could come up with one to fuck, kill, and marry. But well, there's a recently one I just found out about. Like, I, I, dude, I'm totally in love with her. Really? Yeah. I think her name's like Chelsea Chandler or Handler or something like that. Really? Yeah, she's like an older lady. You just found out about her? Yeah, I never knew she was. Where t- you been, her? Oh, you been hiding in the woods? Like, I don't know who the fuck she was. Okay, so dude, do you know- she date? Do you know she dated Fifty Cent? No. This girl I just mentioned, Chelsea Chan- I don't Chandler Handler. I don't know. Huh. She's older. Yeah. She just had like a birthday. She's like older forties. She skied she topless dated down 50 the hill. Cent. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And like coming up to this election, she was saying, like, hey, if you vote for Biden, I'll pay your taxes. You know, like they were gonna get back together. She like loved him. She's like one of the the one boyfriends she's had that, you know, she was just like he was a great guy. Interesting. But I just stumbled upon her. Wow. My wife's not going to be mad that I'm having a crush on this. I don't even know the fucking lady's last name. Chandler Handler. Chandler. She just skied topless down the hill. Interesting. She had like a, she's from Canada. She had a Canadian, uh, forget what those things are that cover women's nipples. A pasty? Yeah, pasties. Those are cool. Didn't really know what those were either. She had like a Canadian one and an American one. And then she had like Canadian flag, American flag. She was skiing and uh, she's smoking a joint and drinking a beer. Like wow. total free spirit, like Sounds just a lady like that's I again living life on level ten. You're talking about celebrities, so I'm just going to tell you this: when it comes to celebrities, I'm not good with names, and I'm not good with celebrities. Like, like I'm one of those people. I, I know a little bit about sports. I like certain athletes. I don't even know. It it amazes me when people know celebrity names. I'll be like. Wow. Like, I, when I sit around people that know all the names, I'll be like, that's amazing. I'm like, you know all the names. See, it's like, I'm guys not... I hang around, though, that know a lot of athlete names. It's like, why do you know so much about those, this team? Like, I feel the same way. I'm not really super into many things. Yeah. But. We all wipe our ass, dude. 
One thing that I have been following for the last few weeks is Logan Paul. Have you heard of Logan Paul? Do you know who Logan Paul is? You know what he does? So, he, uh, he fights. But I know that he has something to do. See, this is Have just you watched go, his fights? This just goes to show I'm in a group text with my buddies, and it's like <laughs> sometimes they'll be talking about stuff. And I'm like, I just won't message it. It's just like, I feel disconnected. Okay. Because I'm just not into it, man. I'm just not into, like, the celebrity, like, shit. There's certain things I'm into. Like, I'm contradicting what I'm saying, but it's just like... I, I don't know. I don't really so know. So, we started a podcast. But, but Logan Paul. But Logan Paul, the only reason I know much about him is because he's called guys out to fight. Yes. And uh, he was recently just called out... Um, Excuse me. Floyd Mayweather? Yes. Mm. This is what I wanted to bring up. Oh, so awesome. Yeah, so recently he called out, you know, Money Money Mayweather. And this Logan Paul... One of Paul, the best fighters ever. And, like, a lot of people... One of they, the most decorated they would, they would boxers argue, to ever live. Because, like, if you watch, like, the Pacquiao, like, Mayweather, like, that one of the last good fights when he was actually still fighting Mayweather, like, like people didn't realize, like, how the guy... More people hate him than like him, I feel like. Because he's an evader. Yeah, he evades. But, like, did anyone say that you couldn't do that? No. The best boxers ever. Look at Mike Tyson. His head movement is fucking yeah. insane. Cause. He just figured out, like... So I just need to, like... Not get punched. Not let you hit me? And then lay you out once you're tired of shit. Like, wait, so I can stay away from the guy and not let him hit me? Yeah, you can do that. Yep. Oh, shit. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. And then when I wear you down, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you. Pummel good. you? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty good plan to me. Yeah. So I just need to have really good endurance, outlast you, and then totally beat the fuck out of you in the last couple rounds? Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. That alone is the point that I'm Sounds here to make, Sounds like one of the best tactics, I would think. Have you watched any of Logan Paul's fights? So this is what I was going to say. So I know he fights. He's only had two fights. Yeah, but then I thought I just recently saw... His brother fights. Oh, so I think I'm confused. His brother knocked somebody the fuck out. He, he knocked an NBA player out. Jake. Nah, so I don't know this one. I know the one that knocked the NBA player out. That's Jake. That's his younger brother. They both boxed. Who was a Disney star? That's how they got famous in the first place. Because these kids were like, I thought maybe their parents had money or like whatever. No, they were, like they were fine Hollywood. stars, but it's only because the younger kid was on fucking Disney. He was a Disney kid. I didn't know this until recently. Yeah. Because I've been trying to figure it's, out, like, how did they get so fucking famous? Like, like, why that. is everybody so obsessed with these motherfuckers? Because I watched the fight, and you know what? The kid can't fucking fight. He's like 6'2", 6'3". Yeah. He's nicely built. He's yeah. nicely chiseled. But the kid can't fucking fight. You think Logan you take Paul, him? I would like to say that I could, only because he has zero hip movement. He does not know how to generate any sort of torque in his torso and from his I, right hand. And when I started golfing, I realized that your your dude, the hips is where it all comes from. Dude, so much power. Yeah. I mean And so when I see him training and all of his shots are coming from his shoulder, I mean he's he's like a rock'em sock'em robot. I mean he's gonna tire out. Yeah, which I have seen in every single fight. So the fact when I say every single fight, every fucking one of the two fights that he's had, that he's not won either single one of, you and now like he's calling the... out Floyd after not winning a single fight. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Dude, you said in like the first or second episode, I had the itch too. I mean, I got to physically like do combatives and roll and I mean, I've been in fights, but like the army was a very good, um, I don't know how I'd put that. Like, we did a lot of, like, striking. You know what I mean? I got my fill of it. You got some hand-to-hand combat in. I would say, like, there's no urge for me to go box. There's no urge for me to go do a UFC. But You've like, done it. If someone was like, you know, hey, if I threw you out there right now, would you just do it? Or would you feel comfortable? I'd be like, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Like, I'd be like, yeah. I'd probably get excited, honestly. I'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. But, like, there's... There's people in this world, and I physically got to see it, and it was it was mind blowing to me. And we're kind of getting off topic, but like, um, you know, it's like shooting a gun. There's some people that have never been in like a, a physical conflict, 
Like, they wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. Like, it'd be like, if I grabbed them, they'd just be, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Right. Like. They wouldn't know how to defend themselves in any way, shape, or form. No, and I'm not saying that, like, makes you a man or makes you a person, but just, like. Knowing that you can, though. Maybe, like, to train or maybe to, like, study. Just gives you a certain level of confidence. Yes, just to know, like, okay, if I'm in this situation, I know that, okay, this is what I can do. I know how to shoot a gun. I know how to defend myself. I know how to throw a punch or I know how to get out of a, a chokehold. Yeah. Cause that's honestly like, that was a big thing in combatives. It was like, it was slow. We did it the slowest we could. It was like, Hey, when you're in this position, it's like, think of things, slow down. Cause your mind's going to race, right? Your mind's always going to be, you're going to panic. And if you yeah. panic, then flight you're getting flight, choked man. out. Yeah. And it's just like, if you just slow down and just think about what you have, like if someone's choking you out, they're choking you out with their arms. So like if you just stop and go, damn, dude, this guy has both his arms around my neck right now, maybe. Maybe. Maybe he's got one of my arms. But either way, I got a free arm probably. Like I know where his head's at. So you just think. It's just like common sense. Just like, okay, I can strike this guy. I can grab his eyeball. I can grab his mouth. Because at this point, you're, you're fighting. If it's in a survival situation, Hell yeah. yeah. Man, it would if just, you're in the octagon, it's roll towards the elbow. Yeah. So you don't get I choked mean, the fuck out. I mean, if you're playing by rules, but I'm just saying, like, in a general sense, like, it's good to know how to defend yourself. There are yourself. many ways that you can... Just to know. It's, yeah. It's good to Dude, know. But I've gotten, I saw, guys, what, real quick, I just want to say this. They were, read like, we talked about pissing yourself. It was the first time. It was like going into level one, uh, getting qualified for level one combatives, and um, you had to get hit. You had to figure out how to take uh, a punch, take a punch, but then go in and do like a clench, like get the person control their arms. But you're going and getting hit. You're not throwing one punch. Actually, let me clarify this: you don't get to throw a punch. You know you're getting clocked, and then you have to clinch, and you have to get them. And these are big dudes. I remember this dude was, I, the guy I got, I was like, man, I hope I don't get that huge Puerto Rican dude. And I was like, go figure, like, they split you into groups and you're like, the first 10, first 10 here, second 10. Oh, it's like, shit. It's like, fuck. And even dudes like in line were like, shit. It's like, oh man, dude, look at this guy. Why didn't we get the short, like, dude, short guy totally strokes this kid and like breaks the first kid's nose. No It was fucking the worst way. start. Like, even I was like, Damn. Like, don't you know? I was like, damn, this is going to be worse than what I thought. I was like, man, I'm about to get my nose broke or something. Like, this sucks. They got to know to give you one on the cheek. No, they were they were delivering. They were telling you to punch you straight square in the nose. Yeah, because these kids were just coming in. Like, you were allowed to hold your hands up. But they didn't know any better. Well, they were just coming in like, and dude, just dude's like, boom. <laughs> It's funny. So, I I mean, I knew better. I was, like, third in line. But literally, like, it was, like, chicken shit shit. It was, like, people got in line, then all of a sudden were, like, uh, like, the lines changed real quick. But, like, kids, like, they were, like, willing right then. They were, like, listen, I'm done. I'm done. Like, I don't want an infantry pack, and I don't want airborne ranger, whatever I have. No way. I'll just give it up. So, do you think it was a type of hazing to kind of weed people like that out? Or do you think it was a legitimate thing that taught you a skill to take a punch? It taught you a skill, but they were also pushing the envelope to like, listen, dude, we're going to fuck you up. But then like, because those you have kids to be able that to were handle super that. scared at the end, probably got it the softest. You know what I mean? Yeah. They still got hit, but they didn't get hit like some people They didn't get did. their nose broken. But still, it was crazy to me to see people like shaking in their boots. I'm thinking, dude, and you're going to go to war? You're scared to get punched right now? Right. Dude, you know you could get shot? That hurts a lot worse. At any point in time, it feels or like. fucking blown Depending up on for the that things that you've said. Nature. Yeah. I mean, I was always more scared about IEDs than I was getting shot. I, I mean, that I'd get sense. shot all day. At least, like, I mean, I have a chance. Some of those IEDs, dude, fucking leave the size of Elkton in the road. Shit. <laughs> no chance. Crazy. Sorry, I shouldn't joke about it like that. But, I mean, I've got skin in the game. I can say it maybe. But, yeah, no no bueno, dude. Yeah, I'd rather get shot. <laughs> Me and my dad just talked about that. He's just like, dude, that would hurt. He reloaded. Uh, they got a reloader. They've been reloading a lot. Because with everything going on, he's stockpiling or we're trying to. Yeah. Still trying to. We're always, always had AMO. 
That's another thing, man. How would you feel right now? I mean, you guys live here, so it's... Say you were just like me, like, single household, like, whatever. Like, you know, yeah, you had family in the area. Like, you do now. You guys all live a different place, maybe. But either way, but you guys, you don't have any guns. And, like, say your dad had, like, one pistol. He's got, like, a box ammo. Nothing else. And, like, your grandparents, they're still living, but, you know, he's got, like, a twenty-two from 1900 and... The barrel's rusted, like, it's not shooting anything. But, like, no guns. Like, do you think those people were nervous? I think... Like, you, would you be nervous to not have, like, a lot of knowledge with guns and ammo and stuff right now? I think outside of public shootings, yeah, people don't think about guns. So, when we were growing up, you and I were taught about guns and gun safety because our families grew up hunting. It was like secondhand. Exactly. Like crossing the street. I mean, it, I can't remember. Taking a gun off safety was like, hey, don't forget to hold your mom's hand when you're walking across the street. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the relationship that you and I have with guns is completely different than most people. There are a lot of people who grew up in different parts of the country. When they think of a gun, they think of a handgun that is used for violence. Or they yeah. think of a number of other things. You know what I mean? Or an AK-47 that's being used in a mall shooting. They don't think, I'm going to go outside and pop a turkey. They don't think, I'm going to go outside and pop a deer. You know what I mean? That's, that's crazy talking to like some younger guys like... Uh with our interpreter when we were in Iraq, like hunting and stuff. Like these kids were forced. Like if it was up to them, they would have nothing to do with the gun they were holding. Right. Like they were like, man, I'm forced to do this. But for us, it was like, I love deer jerky. So of course I'm going to learn how to shoot a gun. Oh man. I forgot. You know? It's all right. Sorry. I had another thought. Keep going. Keep going. But I think, that relationship that we have with it, that relationship that people that grew up similar to the ways that we did, yep. we just have a different relationship with a gun. And yeah, you even very being true, very true. And you even being in the military have a different relationship with a gun than I do. You know what I mean? So like I think that it's just a very nuanced topic because there are a million different viewpoints. But the amount of new gun sales, I mean, it was just on the news. And it's like, we cannot find enough supplies to reload. My dad and his buddy, they like, they're the ones doing the work. I mean, they're doing it. But, um, I mean, we can't find anything. Supplies, it's just either it's the price is like through the roof or you just can't get it. And it's like. I, I saw a video recently of, it, it was maybe a Cabela's or a Dick's or something like that. But it was people first thing in the morning running to the ammo section because, yeah, I saw that too. you know, people can only buy so oh, yeah. much right now. No, I saw that too. And, and for, you know, there is a, a huge difference between somebody who's going to go out and perform a mass shooting and somebody who's going to go out and practice to go buy or, or, or practice to go shoot, shoot a Turkey. We, we have not, um, like we casually would shoot. Like, I mean, it was a normal weekend activity. Yeah. It's something that we would do we for fun. We, we don't do that anymore. Because it's, you can't. No. I mean. It's crazy to we think We would like, sit off and pop off thousands of rounds. Yes. Just for practice. Because that's another thing that I don't think people understand. Is that like when it comes to fine motor skills. Like yeah. shooting. Oh, absolutely. Or like even archery for example. Oh man. You but, have to put in like. They say the 10,000 hour rule. To become a master of something. Like. If you're going to put a gun to your shoulder and know that you're going to hit what you're aiming at, it takes years and hours of practicing over and over again, learning how to control your breath, learning how to open both eyes while you're looking down the barrel and still being able to, to hit your target. You know what I mean? Like it, it's not just like, okay, I'm going to go to the gun range three times and be able to hit every time. Something I did when my wife wasn't, Home here a couple weeks ago. 
and she would like laugh, but like, um, they were called like dime washer drills. And, um, you basically take like a dimer washer and like, this was for like, um, you know, more of an AR platform now, I'll say AR, but, uh, like an M4, M16. Mm-hmm. So like you're laying down in the prone and basically I take a dime or a washer and put it on the end of my barrel and I would go through the functions of, you know, shooting you know, making sure that that trigger pull, I stayed back. Cause that's important. Like people don't realize it's like, it's all about where you're at on your finger. It's that trigger pull, man. And then like holding it steady. And like with, with what we're shooting is a little different. They have a magnetic click. So like you shoot, you hold it and then you leave it out. You listen to that magnetic click and you reach out, charge it, let it go. Even though it's an automatic, this is part of it. Let it go through. You observe the round, do it again without that dime falling off your barrel. Nice. And it sounded crazy at first when you did it. It's like, who can do this? And then you're doing it. And it's like, you're doing it so easy. You're like. Remember the days when I couldn't do that. But now it's like just a couple weeks ago, like I said, doing it. And I was like, how did I do this? I mean, it's just the motor skills, man. It's like being fine-tuned with that, that whatever weapon you're shooting, but I feel like once you're fine-tuned, you're fine-tuned. I mean, you pick up anything as long as you kind of know what you're doing, but yeah, I mean, I could pick something up and shoot it like, and feel fine, but it's just like you want to be more in tune with it. It's like practice. Hey, if you, if you didn't play these for a month... You get rusty. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been a while. You've been playing for years. Years. So I can imagine it wouldn't be much. But even still, you get rusty. I mean, do you play every day? No. No? I mean, well, there are times in my life that like I even do. even for a few minutes, maybe even you're just like... Mm-hmm. No. It depends. There, yeah. there are, like, times in my life where I'm talking, like, nine months where the only thing that I will do... Is play guitar. I thought you were going to say not play for nine months. Well, that does happen as well. That's crazy. There are only, like, I will only play guitar, or I will only play piano, or I'll only play the drums, or I won't do anything at all. Because I've done it for too much. I, I, I've spent too much mental energy on it. So, I mean... If you could only play one, what would it be? The guitar. Piano seems so cool to me. Especially when you get into like synthesizer patches and stuff like that, there's a lot that you can do with a piano. Yeah. It's fun. Dude, we'll have to uh You think we could do like uh the one hunting show I do. They have a really good song. I wanna mention here, Reed Reed is going to um I think we're getting towards the end of this. Yeah. I wanna lead into like uh next week. Just a little little teaser. Um so I'm gonna have Reed film um uh, Turkey Hunt. Turkey season's coming. Uh, I love to hunt. Turkey season is my favorite. And it's I've, just a just a few short weeks ahead of us. Yeah, and, and, and turkey season's only four weeks. It's four weeks long. Um, Ohio laws have changed a lot over the years. Like the first two weeks you hunt sunrise to noon. The last two weeks they've changed it to where you can hunt. The last couple of years you can hunt sunrise, sunset. So you can hunt all day the last two weeks. But anyways... And you can shoot two gobblers, two males. That's it, no females. Um, fall, you have that opportunity. I usually don't shoot a turkey in the fall unless I'm really feeling froggy. Mm-hmm. Um, but Reed Reed is going to film a hunt for me. Or a hunt, or, a, I mean, hopefully a successful hunt, multiple hunts. We'll if, see. Not, if not more than one. If not more. And then hopefully I'm going to get him, uh, he doesn't know, but I will have him in a tree stand this year with me. And... Um, yeah, I, I think he'll fit that mold because I, I've always watched this happen, and I'm like, man, the hunter to filmer ratio. It's like a lot of guys that film they they don't really hunt as much, but they like the outdoors. You love the outdoors, yeah. And it's definitely not the first time I've been in a tree stand. Exactly, definitely not the first time I've had to call a turkey. But it's just like it. You have to find someone that fits that mold that that isn't a total uh, noob. Yeah. So I'm very excited, man. It's going to be fun. It's it's going to be really fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I've tried multiple years. Turkey hunting is um, 
its own beast, man. They're finicky like, birds. I've tried to have cameras and everything set up, but every time when it's going down, it's like, ah, oh, shit. It's like, dude, just here they come. Like, I think just get we're going to get it figured out. But no, we are. We are. Um, but yeah, it's coming up April 24th, but I'm going to have Reed out there. We're actually going uh, down to the property where I hunt at um, for the next potty. Yeah. And, so uh, uh, we're going to do some walking down there. It's going to be fun. When in, we're going to have oh, our first guest. Oh, and we're going to have our first guest. Did we say who it was? We didn't, and I don't think we should. No, I think it should be a surprise. Yeah. That way we, we, uh, we can introduce her uh, properly on the potty. Yeah. And, um, yeah, man, it was fun. Hey, shout out to, uh, again, everybody that follows and likes and watches the videos. We yeah. really appreciate it. And um, our subscribers, episode 10, we've got a big party yep. planned and uh we've got a, a raffle away, man. and drawing ready for you guys two, so two dose giveaway so we'll have two two random it's gonna be a ton of fun yeah it is gonna be fun dude episode 10 is gonna be fun man. hell yeah man i'm excited i'm really excited for this next one it's gonna be awesome easter egg hunt hell yeah. yeah it should be a good time so keep your eyes peeled i think that's uh episode eight in the books yep i think we're good yeah so uh that's it motherfuckers bye see ya